Hi, my name's Joanne Robinson and I'm from the Little Art School. And over the last year or so, we've made so many, almost 200 uh, free online art videos. It's a creative resource for young people, really, just to help you whilst the world shut down. We know at the Little Art School, we know because this is what we do, we do it all the time. We know how much drawing and painting can really help you to relax. And more than that as well, there's a wonderful feeling when you sit back and you've finished a painting and, you, and it makes you feel great. It really builds your self-confidence. And that's why it was so lovely to be asked by Chase Your Smile um, to create this special art video just for you to help young people. Um, Chase Your Smile as part of the Chris Boyd charity and, and the Chris Boyd charity is, has supported uh, the Little Art School through our own uh, children's charity, the Little Art Stars, um, so it has really supported us from the beginning. And um, at the Little Art Stars, what we do is we use art uh, to reach out and help children to really build their self-esteem. This class is really different from anything we've done on our other online videos, but we hope, we really hope that that you find it relaxing and maybe you maybe it will really lead to to thoughts to special positive thoughts and ideas what i feel like i really have to say here is that at the little art school we're not art therapists we are art educators and what we do know through our years of using art to help young people is that it does, it helps you relax. And that's why we've taken this exercise, this tree of life exercise, which is used by people all over the world to really try to build some positivity. And if nothing else, I really hope you just enjoy drawing a lovely tree. So grab a pencil, grab some paper, and let's start drawing. We're going to draw a tree of life and the concept here is really simple it's a visual metaphor and it's we're going to be creating this tree as your life and the elements that make it will become the past and the present and the future and the exercise is all about accepting who you are and thinking about how you want to move into the future now i have done one here this is really different from anything i've done before um, and I loved it. I found it absolutely great. So this is um, this is what I've done. I haven't put this up on the end one because it, cause it's quite personal and it's all about filling it in from your roots up through your branches and to the leaves and the fruits. And we've also got bits that we're going to include in the ground. So we are going to I'm going to put that's that's where I want you to finish up, obviously, with totally different things. This is really personal to me. Um, but that's where we're going to finish up. And we're going to start by just drawing everything piece by piece. Now, when we get to the bits in the sections, I'll just pull that back where you can see I've got things written in like love of books or security or a peaceful world. If you get to that point, you think I can't think of anything at the moment. That's fine. Just leave it blank. And when the inspiration comes, you can come back and fill it in. So we're going to start here at the bottom of the roots. So I'm going to just do this piece by piece. Really doesn't matter if you haven't drawn for years. It doesn't matter if you really think you can't draw, because I'm telling you absolutely everybody can. If you can pick up a pencil, you can draw a picture. So we're going to start here with the roots. We're going to pop in the ground, the trunk, the branches and the leaves. And we're just going to build it up step by step. OK, I'm going to use a pencil. You can use a pen, use whatever you want. I'm just doing this on an ordinary piece of paper. And I painted mine in the end here using some uh, watercolour pencils, but you can use crayons or felt tips or, or, or pens, whatever you've got to colour it at the end. Well, you don't have to colour it. You can leave it black and white. That's the joy of this. So we're going to start here. And what I'm, if that's the bottom of my page here, what I'm going to do is just come up slightly to about there. There, that's the bottom of my tree. And I'm gonna take out some roots. Yeah, like that. So that's one. It doesn't have to be the same at all. We're just creating some tree roots. And you can put as many as you want down, put 10 down if you want. So we'll just start with these roots. Now I'm gonna go for four, but with a few bits coming off them like that. Now, here, these are our roots here. And our roots, 
what these represent, everything on this tree is going to represent something. And these represent where you come from. Um, so they might be um, people who've taught you or um, you could put down um, the where you come from, the place you come from or organisations that have shaped you, or people that have shaped you. So have a little think um, about that, about it might be about your culture or your faith or what is what is, what are your roots? What's helped you? So for me, without doubt, it is my parents. They have really shaped me. They're my roots here. So I'm going to put their, them in there. And I'm also going to put in where I'm from. So I'm going to put where I'm from because that's really important to me. It's where a lot of my family still live in Lancashire in Northern England. You don't have to put these kind of things in your roots. It could be anything that shaped you and it could be different things that you've done or different places that you've been and you just fill those in. So I, I put different parts of my life or different things that I felt shaped the person I've I, I was so you can have a little think of it or if your mind goes completely blank just leave it blank and you can come back to it later so get your roots in first this next bit's really easy we're going to put in our our ground here and all I'm going to do here is do two lines so there just from the top of the roots and I'm going to put in a line there I'm not going to take it all the way over. You'll see why, because we're going to put something else in there. But I'm going to take another section here like that. So it's just two lines that I've curved to become my ground. And what, what we put in here is things that we do on a weekly basis. Or also where you live. Things, what, what, that's our, our roots where we come from. And this is our present of where we are now. So for me... Although that might be my roots here in Lancashire. I've got Ayrshire here because that's where I live now and live and love this beautiful part of the world. So I'm putting in Ayrshire there. That's my ground. That's where I am. But you could also put in things that you do. Now, don't put in things that you're forced to do or things that you don't enjoy doing. Put in things that you really love to do, Th things that you've chosen to do. So for me right now, I am borderline obsessed here with my garden I'm becoming a very middle-aged woman so I'm putting gardening I'm actually going to put a little line down there because that's that's where it's come from my present has come from my past it's come from the root with my parents who are lovers of gardening as well but you could put other things in that you've chosen to do I've put in mine I've put in Japanese I'm taking Japanese classes um because part of my roots which I didn't put in Japan I used to live there so I've put in that there and having my Japanese class. And that's part of something that I've chosen to do with my presence. So you pop in anything that you've chosen to do with your presence, things that you might do every week or all the time. And that is our ground. So two lines and a few words. And again, if you can't think of anything yet, just leave it blank and see if it comes to you later. Okay, now we've got our ground, we've got our roots, and we're going to put in our trunk. And I'm going to take my trunk up and out like this. I don't want to go too far up. I want to leave lots of room up here. I've left loads of room for my for my branches, but popping the trunk in. I found this one really hard, and, and you might too. And if you do, I think you just have to take a big, deep breath and, um, and try to be honest and not worry about being showy-offy, because I think we all worry about that all the time, worry about thinking... Oh, you know, people are going to feel like I'm being boastful. Well, this isn't something that we share. This is this is this is a very private exercise that you can do on your own. You don't have to share this with anyone. But what you're putting in your trunk is your skills and your values. So by your skills, I mean things that you're good at and things that other people say that you're good at as well. So so if you're finding it hard to say I am good at this, we all struggle with this a little bit. Think what you if you asked your friends or your family, what do you think I'm good at? What would they say? And your values are the things that are really important to you, things that you're really committed to. Um, so if I were to be thinking about what my values were and what was important to me, what I've put on mine is helping people because I think that's really something that as I've got older has become 
much more important to me and perhaps the last few months have shown us that more than anything. Um, but I've also um, put down about what my values are, that family, because I'm a mum and my family's so important to me. So my family values are there. With skills, it's, oh, it's so difficult, isn't it? And um, maybe if I, I'm going to put um, about um, sharing knowledge, because I, I, I really like doing that and I think it is one of my skills. Although it's taken me a long time to admit that. You could put lots of different things in there, lots of skills that you have. You don't have to write up. You could maybe just write them across as if they were rings around the tree. I'm sure if you feel really hard and you really dug into yourself about what was important to you and what you valued and what you're good at, you could probably find so many things that you could wrap around that trunk. <music> Now we're going to put in the branches. So this is the bit that takes the longest to draw. And I don't want you to worry about it too much because there's no right and wrong here. You're just going to take each branch out. I'm going to take mine like that. And then I'm going to take small branches coming off it. I want lots of things to put my flowers and my fruit on later on. So I'm just going to do mine coming in like that. I'm going to keep keeping my pencil grip really loose while I'm drawing. I think it really helps with drawing to keep your pencil nice and loose. One of the things I'm hoping from this is that people really enjoy the process of drawing and you think, oh, do you know what? I really miss drawing. I'm going to pick up my pencil and draw more. It can be so relaxing and deeply meditative, uh, the process of just losing yourself with your pencil and drawing. Okay, so there's my first big branch coming down. I'm going to do four. I, I, you can do as many branches as you want. Four is always a bit of a lucky number for me because I've got four children. I'm going to put one there. They're coming out. You really don't have to do it the same as this. You're just putting in some different branches. I'm going to curve one round here like that so I can have it coming down. Sometimes when you're drawing, someone asks you to draw a tree no, I draw every single day. Your mind can go a bit blank of how to do it. So I'm hoping this helps. And I'm just going to put a last little branch coming up here. One of the pictures I saw of a tree of life, I thought it was really lovely. They'd made this bit here into a heart. You can do that if you want to put a heart in the centre of your tree, really create a beautiful design. Now these branches here, this was my favourite bit, the branches here are all your hopes and dreams and wishes. Now they might be hopes and dreams um, for you, or they might be hopes and dreams for people you know, or they could be general, they could be hopes and dreams for the whole of mankind. Um, one of the things I'm going to put in mind here is looking after the environment. It's something I'm thinking about a lot at the moment. We're thinking a lot about it with my um, company, the Little Art School. Um, we're involved in a big nature project at the moment. And it's really made me think about endangered species and all of our responsibilities. So I'm gonna put looking after the environment as one of my hopes. I also might just put some sort of ones that are just about me, what I, what I really want. I really want my business to be successful so I can put business success. And if you've got hopes and dreams that are about your future, about jobs that you want to do, or maybe places you want to go to, um, you could put, I'm going to put travel there. I love traveling. So you can fill those branches with your wishes and look how many branches we've got here. You could absolutely pile that out with loads and loads of wishes. Take your time and have a think about it. <music> Right, we're going to come on to the leaves now and we you can put as many leaves as you want around here and the idea I loved this bit the idea of this is to put in the leaves the names of all those people who are significant to you in a really positive way we don't want 
anybody in there, on, in our leaves, on our tree, who's significant in a negative way, anyone who makes you feel unhappy or bad about yourself or anyone within with whom you have to feel like you have to behave in an inauthentic way. We're putting our leaves, we're going to just fill here. So you could have a hundred if you wanted. You could have five. You could have friends. You could have family. You could have role models. You know, it could be somebody that you've never met, but you really look up to. Um, make sure that you leave some space there because we've got flowers and we've got fruit to put in as well. So I keep... Here's me saying, put in as many as you want. Just leave a bit of space though. So in those, all the people that are significant. You could even put your pets. In fact, I was just hoping my children don't see this, that I've put him down first, but that's my dog, Cooper. I'm gonna put him in, but then I'll put all my children in as well. And my husband, I better get him in there too. But I also think that I'll put in people um, people like dear friends or my, my um, business partner who I'm very close to. These are really significant people in my life. Um, and if I'm thinking about ro role models, um, people that I really look up to and who've really inspired me, I'd put all their names in there as well. So have a think and really enjoy it and get some leaves down. Okay, we're gonna put some fruits in now. So what I'm gonna do is here and there, all over, this is slightly different to the one that I've drawn because I went a bit crazy with my leaves. I'm gonna put in some apples. I'm gonna put one in there. You can put them in wherever you've got space and you can put in as many as you like. So it's just, if you, if you don't like apples, put in a different fruit, but we're just gonna put in fruit around different parts of our tree. And the fruits are things that have been passed on to you. So you could look at some of the names that you've put on your list and think about the impact that they've had on you. What have they given you over the years, all these people? They're, so a legacy is something that somebody has given to you. It doesn't necessarily mean money or objects, although if that's important, you could put that in. But it might be, um, it might be something like, like for me, my love of books, which has been so important to me and is so important to me. And that's something that's been given to me by teachers and my parents. Maybe um, uh, you could have kindness or courage, examples that people have set you that where you found that really uh, important. You could put self-confidence or self-esteem. So different things that people have, you feel that people have given to you, legacies that you pe think people have given to you, that they are the fruits on your tree. That's what's grown up through this trunk from your roots. Okay, and we're gonna now finish off our, our, our tree bits with our flowers. I love doing this bit. You can do any sorts of flowers you want. I'm just gonna do flowers like this. Now our flowers, they are the legacy or gifts that we wish to give to other people. So what is it? What is it that we want to feel like we can give to other people? So I really was thinking quite hard about this when I was doing mine. And one of mine was a love of art. I really wanna pass that on. and it, it's probably the greatest joy of my life when I know that somebody's had their confidence built through what we do at the little art school or through our charities, um, working with vulnerable children or working with um, people living with dementia. When you know that, when I know that somebody has um, really uh, grown to love art, that's 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 my gift. Or maybe it's um, confidence. That's something I, I would really love to give to other people, to have confidence in themselves or to really appreciate being outside and the joy of nature. That's something I'd like to pass on. I'm gonna put my here, my love of art. 
So pop in some flowers and have a think about what you want to give, what you want to give to other people. Now this last little bit here at the bottom, this is optional and I'm, I'm just gonna put it in here because I, I felt like it was quite important. But if it's something you don't want to do or feel uncomfortable doing, then just don't pop it in. But this is a little compost heap. And the compost heap is where we take things and we pop, pop them and they can rot away and actually become something that's really good. Um, so I'm going to take diff things that I don't really um, want to be defined by. So I want to be defined by... Um, by my values and skills and my things that by kindness and things that people have given to me and to be defined by what I want to give to other people. But there's some things I don't want to be defined by. One of the biggest one is worrying about what other people think about me. Oh, um, social media, which can be such a joy and a support on so many levels, particularly whilst we've not been able to see each other, can also be a dreadful place. So I think worrying but you can guard yourself against it by just not worrying about what people think. So that's mine. And another thing I wanted to put on my, I've had some quite bad injuries in my past. So I wanted to put that on my compost heap as well. I wanted to, to start to build a, a really healthy, a healthy self um, where I'm not defined by things that have happened to me. So I'm, I might actually put that on one of my branches. As we see, look, as you're doing it, you'll start to go back and you'll start thinking, oh, I know what I want. I want to be really healthy and fit. And all these things will start to come together. So that's, that's it. That's where we begin. we're beginning. If I bring this one in, back in. We're beginning here with the roots, adding in our ground where our past, our present and here moving into our future of our hopes and our dreams and the gifts we've been given by others and what we want to give to other people. And maybe just some of the things we want to leave behind as well. And um, so that is our tree of life. And at that point, then you can take it off. You can colour it, you can paint it, you can you can add anything to it. Let your imagination go free. So once you've finished this exercise, you might have loads of ideas of possibilities uh, for you moving forward, perhaps um, meditation, which can really help to calm the mind or maybe journaling. That might be something that you're thinking, oh, actually, I'd really like to explore some of these thoughts by writing them in the journals, thinking about those connections between the roots and the possibilities and things that you can reach for, whatever, whether you, you got anything out of it or not. I really hope that you found the drawing itself really relaxing. And that for me is, is why I went into art. That's, I, I learned to draw and paint because I found it to be something where I could really switch off and relax. And I've seen that. I've seen that with hundreds and hundreds of young people that they've used and can use drawing and painting to really, really help them relax. And um, drawing might become your bit of meditation. Maybe that's how you could sit drawing trees, drawing leaves, look up online videos or, or, or art books or ideas or often Pinterest. I use Pinterest all the time as a resource for drawing ideas. That might be somewhere where you find things that you love or you could do the little arts called daily draws. But there's so many resources out there for you to help you if you want to use drawing. So keep drawing and painting and remember that whatever else else is going on around you, you are unique and you are special. And I hope you really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm.